So we have our script here and it does nothing so far. And the first thing we want to do is to check to see if I pass it any commands. So we have a if statement here and I'll end it with phi. And what this is saying is that if the number of things, the number of parameters or commands or flags or whatever passed to this script is greater than zero, then we're going to do something. So if I just go ahead and run the develop command and I pass it nothing, nothing's going to happen. This if statement's never going to get triggered. So let's actually make a case for when that doesn't happen. I can do else here and we'll say the command I want to run if I don't pass the develop script anything is just docker compose ps to list out my current running processes. So I save that, I do develop, we pass it nothing, and let's see, we have a syntax error. And I just need something in this uh, block here, I believe. Yep, okay, so it defaults to develop PS, and if I pass it anything, then it's gonna go and just echo running, which is right here. So now we can build off of this. Now what we wanna do is be able to pass the develop command specific tasks to do, like uh, run an artisan command, a composer command, run against our node container. So we can start doing that. We are gonna do another if statement here. It'll be a nested if statement, and we're just gonna say if the thing I pass it is start, then we can do something. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is actually make two uh, statements and we'll say if and elif. We'll just have a bunch of um, ifs and else ifs here. We're just gonna make a bunch of them just like a switch statement, although we're in bash, so it's easier not to bother with switch statements. We're just gonna do if and else, else if. The first thing I like to do is to create start and stop commands because it's just a little bit simpler than remembering docker compose commands. So for start, I'm gonna do docker compose up dash D. So we're gonna default to just running docker compose up and down. I'm not gonna do docker compose start or stop. And we do dash D flag by default to push it into the background. Now the opposite of that for stop is going to be docker compose down in our case. So I can go ahead and try that out Do develop down or I'm sorry develop stop and that's going to run down. And then I can do develop start which will start it back up with the dash D flag so it won't stay in the foreground. Perfect. Okay so let's expand on this and do some more interesting ones. The next thing I want to do is create one for artisan. So I'm going to do this and what I'm checking for here and really I should explain one other thing we are checking for the dollar sign one item here so what we're checking for explicitly is the first command that we pass the develop script right so the first item I passed was start so I can do develop start and this becomes the dollar sign one uh, variable it gets set to the first thing right so I can't do foo start because the number one variable will be set to foo not to start so we're doing the same thing here. We're going to say if the first thing I pass is artisan or it is art, because I like to do sometimes a shortcut, right? So I can do develop artisan, but I could also just type develop art, which is a little quicker. Then we're going to run an artisan command. All right, so we need to do a few things here first. Artisan, of course, we can pass to multiple things, right? So if I do develop artisan, that's a useless command because I did not pass it stuff like, uh, you know, whatever command I want, lists or make auth or make controller, all the commands you might use for artisan, right? I need to pass that to the artisan command. So let's see how to do that. Essentially what I'm gonna do is php artisan and then pass it anything we uh, passed. But remember that number one item I passed is actually artisan or art. So we don't want it to pass that string. We wanna get rid of that and pass it anything else after it. So here we can actually do shift one as well. And shift one is going to shift everything over one slot. So that first item here, that number one goes away and all the stuff remaining remains in this variable, the dollar sign a, right? So I actually have PHP locally in my computer here. So this is going to work if I do develop art list and it passed list to the artisan command run locally, not in my container. And that worked. Now we need this to run inside of our Docker containers, right? So we need to do our long Docker compose commands. So Docker compose, and here we have a choice, right? I can do run or I can do exec. Um, what I'm gonna do here is actually assume that our containers are running. So I'm gonna do exec because if we do Docker compose run, it creates a new container, right? It doesn't use an already existing container, but I'm gonna use Docker compose exec because it's quicker, but know that that comes with the assumption that we expect our containers to be running in order for me to use these commands. So we're going to do docker compose exec. We're going to run against the app container and we're going to run php artisan whatever within that container. Now let's go ahead and actually see if this works. Develop art list and it worked. Great. So now our working directory is set to the correct place, uh, the var html directory. So this actually worked. So now I can do develop art, you know, whatever I want. Q retry, Q work, anything I need. In this case, I have no queue jobs, so it's not really going to do anything, but you know, I can run that command. You can see it's staying in the foreground because that's how queue work uh, functions. 
It just, pr it just listens for new jobs and presses them as they come in. So I can do all sorts of commands like that now with artisan or art. And then we can just continue on with this, with this pattern as much as we want. So I'll do composer or comp. And I can just copy and paste this, right? It's all the same, basically. I'm going to shift one, do a Docker Compose exec app. And instead of PHP Artisan, we're going to run Composer. And we're going to pass Composer whatever we uh, run here. So develop comp. And I will uh, let's do the H flag for help. And we get the help command for Composer. OK, perfect. Another shortcut I like to do is to run tests. So in this case, I'll just copy and paste this once again. Instead of composer, we can run vendor bin PHP unit, and we'll pass that anything else as well in case we pass commands to PHP unit. Now, I am assuming that the PHP unit is in vendor bin PHP unit, which it will be by default for a Laravel install. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, let me tab these in to make them a little cleaner, to make it more obvious that they're part of this command. So we can do develop test, and this should run unit test, so I don't really have any. This is a totally clean um, installation, but we can see that it ran the two tests that come with Laravel out of the box. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and add some Node.js tests. So I pasted in a bunch of things here, in, and it's npm, yarn, and gulp, and it holds, all has the same pattern. It's shifting one, it's grabbing the first uh, command to see if it's npm or yarn or gulp, and it'll run stuff in our container as well. I could have one as node also, but I typically don't do that, so I don't even include a node uh, command usually. So this is a little different. I'm not using execute, I'm using run, because remember our node container isn't continuously running. There's not a container up and running all the time. So we use Docker Compose run to spin up a new container, and then we do the remove flag uh, to clean up that container when it's finished running, so it destroys that container. It's not always hanging around using up memory. We're gonna run in our node container, and then we run npm or yarn or gulp, depending on where those things are. So I installed Yarn globally in that container, so we can run it as a global. Same deal with NPM, and Gulp, if you have it, will specifically be in the node modules.bin gulp directory. So let's go ahead and check that out. We can do develop yarn install, and that should uh, spin up a new container and run yarn and run the install command. We saw that in a video before, and all the things are already there and installed. And this is almost all the things I want to include here. You can really keep going on forever for any commands that you run quickly here. You can just add to this else if statement, add a command, pass in anything else to any other command you want, build up your own more complicated examples or things that are just specific to your application. You can just keep adding on to this as much as you need to. The only other thing I like to add is another else statement here. And what I'm going to say is that if I pass this something, but it's not test npm yarn or gulp or composer or artisan or art or comp or start or stop, then we're going to pass it to Docker compose explicitly. And we'll just pass it, of course, anything we uh, added here. And we'll just pass it, of course, any flags or commands or any of that good stuff. So now if I do develop ps, it'll run Docker compose ps. I can do develop build, it'll build our images, it says it doesn't need to. And let's see, cannot locate specified Docker file. Um, so if I open my Docker file, we'll just fix that error real quick. Um, so we have the context of Docker app, so this file path becomes redundant. And the same thing here, that's all set. All right, so I just had that one error there. So if I do develop build here, it'll try to build it. And it did find a change in my container since I ran this last, so it's rebuilding it. And of course, it's quick for all the reasons I explained in previous videos. And then it's done. So it's just passing anything else off to Docker Compose. If I type anything it's not that is not recognized as a command in that long if else statement within our develop command. So we really have the option to run any command through develop here, right? It can run Docker Compose commands, it can run our artisan and composer commands, test, npm, all that good stuff. And like I said, it can pass anything through to Docker Compose as well. So here we have a really good workflow script. It's making everything a lot simpler. We can still run everything inside of Docker containers, but we don't have to type out these excruciatingly long kind of dumb commands every time for everything that we want to do for our application.